Okay, I'm briefly going to go over 1D data acquisition. So I have here a 2 millimolar sucrose sample in 90% water, 10% D2O, and I've already put it in the magnet. So the first thing to do is create a new experiment by typing EDC. And that brings you to this window where you can name your experiment number, pick your experiment. I have ZGPR, which is a water suppression 1D pulse program. And then you want to lock on your solvent. So type lock, and it brings up this window where you can choose whatever solvent you have. I have 90% H2O, 10% D2O. Click OK. And if I open up the lock display window, you can see it trying to find the lock signal, trying to lock on D2O. And it'll take maybe a minute. So locking is done. And at this point, we can tune and match. So you can do this manually by typing ATMM or automatically by typing ATMA, which is the easiest way to do it. And we're going to be tuning and matching on the proton signal. Okay, ATMA has finished, so now you can shim. And shimming is really important because it really affects your data quality and your line shape and line width. So um, shimming is basically just homogenizing the magnetic field around your sample. So to shim, type top shim GUI, and it'll bring up this user interface here, and you can see all of your options. You can shim, either do 1D shims, which is just on the Z axis, 3D shims, which is on the Z, X, and Y axes. And down here in this parameter window is where you can enter all of the different options you want because Topspin has, uses a variety of different options in shimming. The most common ones are going to be um, RGA, which is something you always want to use if you have chloroform as your solvent, for example or Tune B, um, which is kind of a random op optimization of your shims, of the axial and radial shims. And this is also the same thing as Tune B if you just select Tune before and this option. Or you can type Tune B. Another option is Shigami. And you want to use this if you're using a Shigami tube and Shigami tubes are usually used when you have a small sample volume. And because you have a small sample volume, your axial shims in Z5 and Z6 and Z4, um, it might be outside the boundaries of your sample volume, so it'll give you a bad shim set. So if you type Shigami, it'll just do shim on Z1, 2, and 3. So we're just going to stick with RGA not because we need to, but why not? And first, if we do a 1D shim, just to see what it looks like, press start. And you can see it running. And once top shim has completed, you can go to the report and see that it says completed successfully. That's great. Sometimes you'll have to do 1D shimming multiple times because you'll have different values in your report and you want them to converge on one value where it'll say completed successfully. So for 3D shimming, this can take up to a half an hour, typically I think around 15 minutes. 
So 3D shimming, again, just press start and let it go. And then come back when it's done. And a thing to look at when you're doing 3D shimming is the lock display window because you can see um, the variations in due to gradient firing that's used to gener generate the image for the shim set. Okay, so Top Shim 3D is done. So we can look at our report by typing Top Shim Report, which will bring up this. And you can look at all the shim values here. And they look pretty good. If they're in the thousands or tens of thousands, that would be considered a really big change, and you'd want to redo Top Shim 3D. But as they're not, we can say this is a pretty good shim set and proceed. And also note that it completed successfully and how long it took, which was only eight minutes. And like I said, it can take up to 30 minutes, 20 minutes if you're starting with really crummy shims. So the next thing to do would be to test your shim set and do that by first running a ZG and looking at water, and that's what I've already done here. So measure the O1, which is 4.78, and then go to a nosy preset data set and set the O1 for water suppression. If you type 01, you'll see it was actually set to 4.78. RGA to set the receiver gain, to optimize it. ZG. Okay, acquisition is finished, and this is the result of the nosy preset experiment. So, Fourier transform the data, attempt automatic phasing with APK. And we have a sucrose sample over here, or a sucrose peak. And it's actually phased very well. So you know it's in spec if um, the peak splitting is 40% of the way down the peak. And it looks great here because splitting is almost at baseline. So at this point, I'd say we're good to go. So the last thing we're going to do is rerun Top Shim, um, the RGA option and Z6. And we're going to compare that result to the result we already have here. And it should be better. Okay, we're going to Fourier transform our data, phase it, and look again at that sucrose peak. And it's tiny, so it's really hard to see. 
but I think it's safe to say um, that the splitting between the peaks is even better. And if we look at our sucrose peak here, you can see that it's definitely in spec, and so we are good to proceed with our experiment. And that concludes setting up and implementing 3D Topshim. And later we'll be going over um, problems with locking. <laughs>